Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I have something very special to show you today. This is the Mediterranean Waves Infinity Scarf. It is one big loop and it has a highly texturized side on this side and if you turn it the opposite so that the other side is showing, you don't have the texture, but you have the beauty of the yarn. It has a very different look. So you can reverse this and wear it either way or even both at the same time. And let me just show you a favorite way for me to wear these. You can wear this long inside your coat or you can double wrap it just like this. And you can enjoy both the texture and some of the color. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. Taking a closer look at this, I'm going to be using two hanks of the Earth Yarns. This is the Uneek type of yarn. It's a fingering weight, 100% super wash, extra fine merino. The yardage, 435 yards in each hank or 400 meters. And that would be 100 grams per hank. And for the record, this is color number 3010. And do be mindful that they are dyed in lots. And you want to make sure that those lot numbers match. And the contrasting color that I'm using is their monochrome fingering. This is also by Earth Yarns. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats on this. This is 100% extra fine superwash merino fingering weight, 435 yards or 400 meters. And again, the color that I'm using is color number 3053. And again, we don't have to worry too much about the lot number since we are only using one. So isn't this beautiful? I just want to give you a good view of the colors. It's going to be a lot of fun on this journey. I'm also recommending that you have a size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook and as always a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. Now we're ready to begin. We're going to start with our slip knot and a starting chain of 59 chains. After crocheting those 59 chains, we are going to start by working a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook one, two, three, four. We're actually going to work four double crochets in the same space. And for the record, this chain three at the beginning does count as a double crochet. After that, we work a double crochet in the next chain. And now what I'm about to do, we're going to do eight times. We're going to skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. Skip the next double crochet in that next stitch or the next chain. Skip the next stitch, double crochet. Skip the next and double crochet. So we're going to do that until we have eight of these completed. Let's see how many do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let me just clarify the counting. I'm not including the first double crochet because that is cr crocheted right up against um, the next stitch from the previous work. So we skip one crochet, a double crochet in the next stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times total. In the next chain, we crochet five double crochets. This is crocheting the tops of these chevrons. I guess they're really more waves because they're not nearly as pointy as a chevron would be in the traditional ripple stitch. The next stitch, 
we crochet five stitches again, five double crochets. And that's four and five. It's always a good idea if you can take the time to verify your stitch count to make sure that you have the correct number in these stitches. So after verifying those stitch counts, we're going to work a double crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat what we just did. Skip the next stitch and a double crochet in the next chain. And we're going to do that eight times again. Just make sure that you don't skip more than one chain as you're doing this. Let's stop and take a look and do a, a check on our count. So this is the double crochet that we crochet after that cluster and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need one more. I'm trying to help you see these stitches as best as I can um, with the um, thinner yarn. It's a little trickier, but I'm hoping that you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, after doing those eight repeats with the skip one and double crochet in the next, we work again five double crochets in the next stitch. And then five in the next stitch as well. I am crocheting them a little on the faster side, but these are just double crochets. So if you need um, instruction on how to do double crochets and the other stitches that I'm going to use, you can just check the video description and you can watch slower, more detailed um, instructions on how to form these. After that, we work a double crochet in the next stitch. And then again, eight repeats, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next. So we're going to do that a total of eight times again. All right, let's double check our count again. Make sure I didn't skip anything. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's take a look at these others that we're doing. It's a little tricky at first once we're getting started. Now we're going to work four additional stitches in that last stitch. Now we are ready to turn. So now for row two, we're going to chain one and we're going to work front post single crochets. This is the first time I've worked these in a design. So what we're going to do is like giving the stitch a belt. Um, but we're going to start with the very stitch on the end. So we're going to come around. We're going to bring our hook in through the window like this. Grab the yarn. Pull up a stitch, yarn over, pull through two. And the next, we again bring the hook around that double crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, we're going to do that all the way across. 
And this is what's causing the texture. And we'll see that more clearly in just a minute. And I think this is going to be beautiful as the colors begin to change on us. And it's going to be a good way to see the, um, the waves of this design. So we're not skipping anything. We're just working in each stitch as we go across. So I'm going to go ahead and work each of these as front post single crochets. After working this all the way across, we're going to work a single crochet worked into the turning chain. And that will be the last stitch of row two. Now we're going to repeat row one again, except the difference is we're going to be working in the single crochets. Now do be careful that you work in the single crochets, um, not in the tops of this stitch here, which was actually row one. That could be probably the thing that can trick you up if you're not paying attention. So I'm just speaking to myself as I record this and saying that. So I want to be very careful that I crochet into the proper place. So after chaining three, we're going to work four double crochets into that first stitch. And one double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're back to the skip one double crochet in the next. We're going to do that eight times just like we did in row one. Okay, let's stop and verify that we did the right number of stitches. Okay, that was the one stitch after the cluster and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need one more. Eight. And remember now, I am crocheting in the single crochet. Don't, don't get tricked and start crocheting in this because that is the texture that we're creating. After those eight, skip one and double crochet in the next stitch. We work five double crochets in the next, each of the next two stitches. And we want to make sure that we do have five stitches there. Let me go ahead and verify one, two, three, four, five, and then five in the next stitch. And this will be at the very top, you know, very top of the wave. Okay, let me get another stitch count since I was talking. One, two, three, four, five, and that is correct. Now one double crochet in the next stitch, and then again, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. We do that eight times. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you what to do after that. And just like the last repeat, after those eight sets of skip one and double crochet in the next stitch, and we're at the, should be at the top of the wave, we're going to work five double crochets in each of the next two stitches. And the next stitch. Let's pause and take a look at that. I'm going to finish one more repeat. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch and then skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to do that eight times.
Let's see where we are on our stitch count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip the next one. And then eight. So the same place where you work that eighth repeat, let's go ahead and work four additional stitches in that space. Take a look at what we have. So now we're ready to turn and begin row two again. This is actually row four of the pattern, but it is a repeat of row two. We chain one, and again, just going to do front post single crochets in each stitch across. So the first one, we come around, loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to do this for every stitch across. Whoops, I almost wrapped the hook. Don't want to wrap the hook. We're just doing single crochets. Front post single crochets. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. So now going forward with this pattern, I'm going to be mixing it with a different contrasting color. And so what I have decided to do for my particular design is I am going to work rows one and two until I have a total of eight rows or four repeats of rows one and two. I've already worked two so far. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is work four more rows in this color. And then I'm going to change to the yellow and I'm going to work four rows of this color. And that way I can use up my yarn equally and I think it's going to give it a really nice um, color coordination. And this way with the more consistent color, it will help to further define these waves in this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and work four more rows and then I'll show you what I have and show you my color change. At the end of the eighth row, before I complete this single crochet, I'm going to change colors to my contrasting color. We're just going to pull this strand through to complete the stitch and then we can tie the strands together in just a second. So let's go ahead and chain three and turn and let's go ahead and trim trim this other thread and, and you're going to want to trim a generous strand so that it will be easier to hide and I'm just going to do a gentle knot here just so that it doesn't go very far. You can choose to not do knots or you can make a knot. This is just to secure it for the time being and I can make a decision on that either direction later on. Okay. Um, now we're just going to go back and we're going to do four rows, repeating row one and then row two, I believe it is. Okay, yeah, row one and then row two, two times. So let's go ahead and get that started. And again, make sure that you're working in the single crochet and not in the surface um, stitching there. So we start with four double crochets in that first stitch. One in the next stitch. And then this is where we begin skipping one and then a double crochet in the next for eight um, repeats. So rather than go through that again, you know how to do the rows. If you need any um, stitch help, you can just go back. I'll put the um, time mark at the bottom of the screen. And so again, we're going to repeat four rows, two sets of row one and two with the contrasting color. And then after that, we're going to return to the other color that we were using and we're going to work eight rows or four sets of rows one and two with the contrasting color. So I'm going to go ahead and work this up for, um, you know, for, for many, many rows, many repeats. And then I'll show you what this looks like.
Okay, I have completed all of my repeats. And let me give you a feel for this. I'll show you a better view of this once I'm done. And you can just see all the beautiful colors, how this has has come through by alternating those two different colors of yarn. And as you see, each of these are, are 12 row repeats. And just for the record, I have completed a total of 16 of the 12 row repeats. And that has given me a scarf that's approximately 53, 54 inches long, depending on how you measure this, because this fabric is quite elastic. Um, the width of this scarf is six and one quarter inches, and I am not going to work um, an edging on either side. I'm just going to hide these loose strands and see how it goes. But first, we're going to have to connect. So I ended with those four rows of the contrasting yellow color. And let me go ahead and show you how I'm going to join these two together. Now, as we hold these back to back, you're going to see it looks kind of strange because one side goes up and the other side goes down. But when you hold it together like this, you see that it is in unison. You know, it's going the same direction. So what we're going to do, we're just going to use slip stitches to connect these. I'm going to chain one and working in that, this is the last row. Let me show you. This is the row of single crochets, those front post single crochets that we worked in the previous row. We're going to go in to the top of those two loops and we're going to join with the first stitch on the foundation row just like this and slip stitch that through. And we're going to do this all the way across and if we did our stitching correctly, these should work out stitch by stitch. You should have the same number of stitches that you began with. So let's go ahead and make sure that you do stick to these chains. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just, if you can see what I'm doing, slip stitch. Let's do that again. And I'm just going to do this all the way across. I'm going to go through two of those loops slip stitch. It's a little bit tedious and time consuming, but this is the last thing we need to do besides hiding all those loose strands. So it is a little tricky to get it into those two loops of the chain, but just take your time. There's no rush to get this done. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this across the row and then I will show you the fasten off. So after working this these slip stitches all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and give it a chain and give it a tug. And I'm going to go ahead and clip a generous strand to be hidden inside the work. And you can see, you can see that join. Okay. So hopefully this won't stand out too much. Um, but let's go ahead. And let's try to hide a couple of these strands. You do have quite a few of these to hide. And what I'd recommend is hiding them underneath a similar colored yarn. Now, since this project is going to be reversible, you're going to have to be very careful with how we hide these. So let's go ahead and I'm going to try, there we go, starting this under the seam just right here for now to start. And what we can do is work these inside the stitches like so. And then I'm going to run under some of the stitches here. And then I'm going to run this back up through the same color stitches. You just do the best you can to hide these. And I could just go ahead and clip the strand there, but I'm going to go ahead and run it just a little bit further into a couple more stitches just so that it doesn't, um, doesn't pull out or, or get loose. 
Okay, and then let's let's go ahead and run it back. I'm gonna go ahead and run this back underneath the stitches here, and I'm gonna hide it underneath this cluster once more. Now you may not always have have a cluster of stitches like this to hide them under. But actually, actually, you might because you're going to be working near the edge. So that that group of stitches is going to probably be the best place. But go ahead and wind them through the stitches a little bit. That way, as you can see, that is perfectly hidden and that is not going to be seen again. So I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, this multicolored yarn again. I'm going to hide it under these other colored yarns and you've got lots of other other threads along this end. Now, if you don't want to tie knots, what you can do is untie the knots and then hide the threads one at a time. Um, that might be the best thing to do. And if you hide them by going up and down into the stitches like I showed you, these should not come undone. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide these and then I'll show you what I have. you enjoyed making the Mediterranean Waves Infinity scarf with me today. If you did, please comment below. I would love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.